Hey y'all, Coach 25 here, guy Chris Swimming. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Pentecost, and in particular, second Pentecost in the year 2023. All right, that's coming up tomorrow, right? Well, we're going to find out in this video. We're going to talk about that. We're going to look at the calendar as we talk about when this will start specifically, because it could be as early as this evening. Right. But we will have other information related to Pentecost for those watching it later on. Some very important information. So don't let the timing of this video throw you off. Mm -hmm. Don't think you're too late to watch the rest. Absolutely. There's some very important information that we're going to get to. So let's go ahead and get to it. We're looking here in the pseudopographa.com. And the reason why we have to come to this, Chris, is guess why? Why is that? Because we have to look in the hidden books to oh. find the scriptures coming out of the book of Jubilees which is part of the hidden collection, which is, of course, Jubilees, the book of Jasher, and the book of Enoch. Right. First Enoch. We'll also be talking about, um, I wish I had some verses from Jasher, then we can have the complete set of the hidden books uh, to talk about in this video. And maybe we'll do that another time for grins and giggles. But I just wanted to bring out the point that how are these books being hidden? Well, even in the title of the name, yeah, like the pseudepigrapha. Pseudo means fake, right? Right. So right. they like they're like hiding these books by calling them pseudo books. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we're here at pseudepigrapha.com, and we're going to drop down to the book of Julies, and we're going to come particularly out of chapter six mm -hmm. as we start to study on Pentecost. So let's go ahead and get to it, if you would, Chris. Free first one. And on the new moon of the third month, he went forth from the ark and built an altar on that mountain. Now he's talking about Noah here, and he's exiting the ark. After the flood. After, right after the flood, absolutely. And he made atonement for the earth and took a kid and made atonement by its blood for all the guilt of the earth. For everything that had been on it had been destroyed, save those that were in the ark with Noah. So that's real interesting, right? And that he made a sacrifice right after for as an atonement for the earth for the whole earth right because it was the earth that did this right. flood it was the earth that Noah had nothing to do with that right right and so he's making atonement for the earth all right let's go on and he placed the fat thereof on the altar and he took an ox and a goat and a sheep and kids and salt and a turtle dove and the young of a dove and placed a burnt sacrifice on the altar and poured thereon an offering mingled with oil, and sprinkled wine, and strewed frankincense all over everything, and caused a goodly savor to arise acceptable before the Lord. Now, this sounds extravagant, for the lack of a better word. Right. But you got to understand, that's all these people had, right? Right. So they didn't have the things that we have today to make these kind of offerings and sacrifices. And that's going to be important, because obviously our offerings are going to look different. Yeah. But they're for the same papers, and we're going to find out here what that purpose is. Let's look at verse 4. And the Lord smelt the goodly savor, and he made a covenant with him that there should not be any more a flood to destroy the earth, that all the days of the earth, seed time and harvest, should never cease, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night should not change their order, nor cease forever. Now, Look how important this is, this covenant that he's making with these people. It is because of this covenant that we're going to get all of these benefits. Right. No more flood to destroy the earth. Well, it's because of this covenant. Right. So what happens if you break the covenant? Well, you're going to get flooded. And well, maybe not necessarily because of the whole rainbow promise deal that that would never happen again right. but what about this other stuff like seed time and harvest time coming to a cease in other words you ain't got nothing to eat that's when the famines will come right and then it's cold and heat we can actually see this heat now as these UV rays are you know harming people right, these days right. and then summer and winter he's talking about losing the seasons climate change and stuff climate like change yeah if we don't actually keep this covenant he's saying this stuff could possibly go away day and night I mean think about that for a second how is it possible that day and night should change their order or cease or something like that well if you don't want to find out you gotta yeah, learn about this covenant All right let's go and you increase ye and multiply upon the earth and become many upon it and be a blessing upon it 
the fear of you and the dread of you I will inspire in everything that is on the earth and in the sea. Now see, this is why they don't want you to know about the covenant. The fear of you, the dread of who? Dread of you, the people who keep in the covenant. The dread of you just keeping the covenant. So they mm, try to make us unaware of the covenant so that they don't have to fear us. Right. But anyway, that's their problem as well. And behold, I have given unto you all beasts and all winged things and everything that moves on the earth and the fish in the waters and all the things for food as the green herbs I have given you all things to eat. Now, this is very similar to what we read over there in the book of Genesis. And that's important as we make this connection with the book of Genesis. Right. Um, with the book of Jubilees, which was also scribed by Moses. Right. He wrote down both of these books. And we're actually seeing the same story that we saw in Genesis now with way more emphasis. All right, let's go. On. But flesh with the life thereof, with the blood, ye shall not eat. For the life of all flesh is in the blood, lest your blood of your lives be required. At the hand of every man, at the hand of every beast, will I require the blood of man. Yeah, so. So this is where it tells us again that we are not to eat blood with our meat but he's also talking about how the scripture prophesies about these wild animals that are supposed to come out of the wilderness right in the end times of course that are look uh, that seem to me to be bloodthirsty looking for those of us who actually prefer to eat blood you know? right what this is talking about is how we are actually required to get the blood out of the meat before we eat it right else what it says here our blood will be required for us by man and beast right so you go to the book of Amos but you understand like I was talking about these beasts that right. come out of the wilderness and beasts that we've never seen before right that you know are coming with the sole purpose of fulfilling this prophecy that we see here in verse 7 or this you know curse or whatever you want to call it but let's look at verse 8 whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed or in the image of God, may he man. Now, this is interesting that he's making a connection with eating of the blood with murdering man. Yeah, right in the very next verse. Yeah. All right, let's go on. And you, increase ye and multiply on the earth. So this is the covenant. Right. right? This is the Noahic covenant, not the Noahide covenant, which is some different made up stuff that you know people get twisted around the axle on all on Google and stuff. This is the Noadic covenant, which right. is a blood covenant it's simply saying you won't eat blood. Yeah. That's what caused the flood in the first place. That they were eating blood, eating each other. The Nephilim were eating the people. And yeah, and so the eating of this blood, you know, is the cause of this problem in the first place. And so this covenant comes about to say, okay, if you don't eat blood, this these things will never happen again. Right. Or you'll get these particular benefits for keeping this covenant. Like it says, they're increasing and multiplying upon the earth. And the fear and the dread. Right, right, right. All right, so let's go on. And Noah and his sons swore that they would not eat any blood that was in any flesh. And he made a covenant before the Lord God forever throughout all the generations of the earth in his mouth. So this right here, Pentecost, is a blood covenant. Right. It's basically the covenant when you decide that you do not want to eat blood anymore. You know? And like I said, we talk about eating the blood and people are like, ugh, 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 when am I going to eat blood? If you don't intentionally get the blood out of the meat, it is still in there. Right. You cannot cook it out. No. That's only cooked blood. And like people say they don't like um, wild animals because it's gamey and all it is. That's well, because it wasn't cooked properly. Well, it's because they didn't get the blood out. So either you have to parboil the meat to get right. the blood out, or you can use salt to get the blood out, or maybe, you know, half a dozen other methods that I maybe not don't even know about. But the point is, is that we have to get the blood out of that meat before we eat. And then you understand why people are shamed for eating well done steak and stuff. Don't want you getting that blood out. And, and why we said earlier, because they don't want to have that dread or that fear, right? Right. So, do your steak dinner. That's exactly what they did, you know, in the Old Testament times. In the story of Baal and Balak, remember Balak the king tried to get Balaam to 
curse Israel. Right. But he was unable to. Because they were protected. But what did Balaam do? Balaam told him how to get the Israelites cursed. Right. And what did he do? He invited them to a, a, uh, a dinner. Right. Yeah. Had them come over and eat, come over and eat food with us. And simple as that. Because they was eating the wrong kind of stuff or even on the wrong day. You know, right. kind of had like a pagan festival thing to go over and invited all of these Israelites over there. Eating pork with the blood on a pagan festival. <laughs> Talking about Black Lives Matter. But anyway, where are we at? 11. All right. On this account, he spake to thee that thou shouldest make a covenant with the children of Israel in this month upon the mountain with an oath that thou shouldest sprinkle blood upon them because all the words of the covenant which the Lord made with them forever. Now, this is a very important verse. Right. Now, this jumped up to when Israel was first started. And it's telling us what we have to do on this particular day. Right. He said, uh, spake to thee that thou shouldest make a covenant with the children of Israel in this month. So it's, it's about this covenant. Right. right? And we've heard what the covenant is. This is a, I'm not going to eat blood covenant anymore. It doesn't say anything else. Right. Right. It's all about this blood. This is the Noahic covenant. Not the Mosaic covenant, which is, of course, Exodus chapter 20 through 24. Right. That's important, too. But this one is different. This is one of the other eight covenants. Mm -hmm. And so, but look what he's saying here to sprinkle blood up on them. Right. But how are we going to do that in this day and time? We'd have to have symbolic blood. Well, where is our symbolic blood then? That would be the wine, blood of our Messiah. Absolutely. He changed his blood into water and then that water into wine. Right. So we get baptized first and then to wash our garments, our fleshly garments with his blood. And then, of course, we have Passover every year after that to maintain ourselves because we are sinful by nature. Right. And even though we've been baptized, we're going to still make mistakes. Well, we have praise our father in heaven. Blessed be his name. Passover that we can renew our covenant and renew the sprinkling of the blood. Right. So that makes sense why it's kind of tied to Passover and all of that. We're going to see when we get to Leviticus 23. Mm -hmm. So we got a little ways to go. So let's go on. And this testimony is written concerning that you should observe it continually so that you should not eat on any day any blood of beast or bird or cattle during all the days of the earth. And the man who eats the blood of beast or of cattle or of birds during all the days of the earth, he and his seed shall be rooted out of the land. How important is that? Rooted out of the land? But you don't have to wait to Pentecost to stop eating blood, do you? No, no, no. That's, no. Yeah, that's what we're saying. This is extremely important stuff. But some of the people watching it too late, they go, like, oh, I missed Pentecost. No, every day is Pentecost. You know, every day we should be making a covenant that we're not going to eat blood. We read that in Genesis that we're not allowed to eat any blood. Right. You know, and they're talking about just red liquid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do thou command the children of Israel to eat no blood? so that their names and their seed may be before the Lord our God continually. So now this is one of the things that is starting to create separation. Notice it says here the children of Israel. Right. Maybe this is why Japheth likes blood so much. Is because he feels left out. Feel, oh, okay, that's, that, we'll go with that. He feels left out. Well, that's the purpose of our Messiah who now grabs them back in. Right. But check this out. When Paul came and Paul was talking to the Gentiles. Paul didn't give them all the Mosaic laws and all of that. Paul gave them very few instructions. Watch. Put in blood. So you look in Acts chapter 15. And you hear Paul. Who is one of our favorite authors. Talking to the Gentiles. And giving them their instruction for their salvation or, how, or whatever. And what is he saying? Abstain from the pollution of idols, from fornication, which is what we do on pagan festivals. You know, right. we may not be dedicated to that false god, but we'll go down and sit with them at that festival. That's fornication. Right. And from things strangled, right? Because you know that actually does something to the flesh when you strangle an animal. Right. right? And from eating blood. And that's it. Those are the only instructions. That's the Paulinian law 
He said, Mosaic law, that's the Paulinian law. and huh? In just one verse. In one verse. But in that verse, it includes abstaining from blood. Right. So my point is, is that the Gentiles are also under this destruction. If they eat blood, they are disobedient to the New Testament, which they tend to believe in. Right. All right. So let's go on. And do thou command the children of Israel to eat no blood, so that their names and their seed may be before the Lord continually. So if you eat blood, you're going, your name's going to get erased. Right. And, and a while, like we talked about, the wild animals going to eat you. And so what that means is that when it's time for the multitude that no man can number to stand up after the tribulation, you will not be counted among them. Right. Right. And so yeah, you won't get to inherit the earth and all of the promises of the scripture simply because you like to eat blood. Yeah. And when you could have got the blood out, it brought it out. It's not that hard. And it's not that hard. And they have this new equipment, like that. What they call the sous vide thing. Yeah. You know, and because Christian, that what we did the experiments, right? You have to get the the beef up to a hundred and what? Sixty five. A hundred sixty five degrees. And what that will cause is the meat to denature. Right. Which is a technical word for pushing all of the blood out. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that that's the word that they use. Because it sounds like they're taking the nature out of the blood, out of the food. Right. So, which is the... Which, the life. The life. So, they could have easily called it the lifer. Yeah. But anyway, let's go. And for this law, there is no limit of days, for it is forever. They shall observe it throughout their generations, so that they may continue supplicating on your behalf with blood before the altar. Every day at the time of morning and evening, they shall seek forgiveness on your behalf perpetually before the Lord, that they may keep it and not be rooted out. So he tells us so plain that this is never supposed to stop. Right. People quit to say, oh, that was the Old Testament. We can't eat what we want. No, you can't. You know, I'm not planning on getting eaten by some vicious wild animal that's going to come out the woods to hunt me down. But let's go on. And he gave to Noah and his sons a sign that there should not be an, again another flood on the earth. So we don't have to worry about that flood. But what was that other stuff he talked about up there? The lack of day and night, lack of seed time and harvest, yeah. Yeah. cold and heat, summer and winter. Yeah, see, humans can't survive without any of that. Right. This is a life or death situation. So let's go on. And he set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should again not be a flood on the earth to destroy it in all the days of the earth. So when our children hollers out, hey mom, there's a rainbow, we should remind them that what they're saying is, Sean, you agreed that you would not eat blood. Right. This is that's, that's an agreement that we made and then tell them what that agreement is. It ain't just something saying he ain't gonna flood the earth again because according to what we read up there, he could. He could. We broke the contract. We, we didn't live up to our end of the bargain. He said, if you do this, I will not do this. Well, we eat even blood. Right. So he can flood it anytime we want, and there's nothing we can say about it because we are covenant breakers. Right. So let's go on. For this reason, it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month, once a year, to renew the covenant every year. Every year we're supposed to renew this I won't eat blood covenant. Right. And that's one of the things that Pentecost is about. We're going to find out that it's about another here. But just look at how many verses and how many times he keeps saying Don't covenant blood. and blood. Yeah, this is yeah, this is, this is what it's all about. And it needs to sink into us when we think Pentecost, we think about this covenant. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation to the days of Noah, 26 jubilees and five weeks of years. And Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees in one week of years to the day of Noah's death. And from the day of Noah's death, his sons did away with it until the days of Abraham, and they eat blood. And that's why you don't hear about nobody from Noah to Abraham. Yeah. Ain't nobody did nothing because they was eating blood. He said after Noah died, they like started eating blood again. They stopped doing Pentecost. Why do you think that is? Because Noah understood how to cook the meat. Right. And apparently he took those secrets with him when he died. Or maybe they just like it. Some people like it. But they mean. And you know what that reminds me of? Hmm. Vampires. I believe that's where vampires oh, yeah. come from. Hmm. Yeah, they like bloody meat. And you know, so they are the point where that's all they eat is blood. Yeah, and so they are the real life vampires. That movie stuff, you know, is just fake. They're all real life vampires running around here down at you know, out back steakhouse. Walking past you on the sidewalk. Yeah, walking past us, looking down at us as they go in and indulge in their vampirism. Is that? Yeah. 
peers. Right, yeah. So it is actually a word. But let's go on. But Abraham observed it, and Isaac and Jacob and his children observed it up to thy days. And in thy days the children of Israel forgot it until ye celebrated it and knew it on this mountain. So? It seems like every time people start eating blood, they disappear from the record. Yeah, because they are no law, they are covenant breakers. And that's what this thing is all about. We're told to teach that Father loves everybody. And he does love everybody. Right. But the Elohim is not planning on everybody surviving. The Elohim don't love everybody. The Elohim only loves the people who are obedient to the covenant. Right. I mean, that's what Michael's job is. He is the protector of those who keep the covenant. Well, guess who he's protecting them from? The vampires. Those that don't. Yeah, those that don't. And the plan is, is that they will be annihilated from the earth altogether, leaving only those who will adhere to these covenants. They will actually evolve in what we know as the kingdom of heaven, this thousand years where everybody on the planet keeps all of the covenants all of the time right and of course when they make a mistake they do their passover to get the remission of the sins but you know that's that's the way it's going to be right. you know we're still not going to be perfect but there ain't going to be no can't do rights you know those people who say you know but junk is done away with and we don't need to do this and we can eat what we want and all of that well none of those people will be will be here no bad examples. No bad examples for our children. Absolutely right. So let's go on. And thou do command the children of Israel to observe this festival and all their generations for a commandment unto them. One day in the year in this month they shall celebrate this festival. See, now this is why they are told to teach us not to obey these covenants. You know, that's what they teach you at seminary school. That, yeah. you know, to actually have um, that the seminary school, what I understand, I, I, I chose not to go. Praise our Father in heaven. But what I understand is the purpose of seminary school is to arm a preacher with answers to questions like, why don't we keep the covenant? Right. So he's taught to make us disobedient to this covenant and the rest of them for the sole purpose that, you know, we don't receive these benefits. And of course, we receive these curses. Right. But notice how we're saying that we have to do this every single year. Forever. Forever. All right, let's go on. For it is the feast of weeks and the feast of first fruits. This feast is twofold and of a double nature, according to what is written and engraven concerning it, celebrated. For I have written in this book of the first law, and that which I have written for thee, that thou shouldest celebrate it in its season, one day in the year, and I explain to thee its sacrifices, that the children of Israel should remember and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month one day in every year. In other words, Pentecost is about making your offering and renewing the covenant. That was all the two folds. Right. All right, so now let's jump over and let's change gears a little bit. We're going to look in Leviticus 23 and we're going to start all the way down at verse 15 when it starts talking about the timing of Pentecost. All right. Would you go ahead and read that? And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath from the day that ye brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. And what he's talking about is up here in the Feast of First Fruits. In the spring, what he would be talking about is the first Sabbath after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. So with your Sabbath being on April the 13th, the day after would have been April the 14th. Right. But that's first Passover. Right. Or first unleavened bread, you have to remember second unleavened bread, which is why a lot of people are interested in this video. So looking back, we can reference some of the videos from earlier, but for the sake of time, we'll just show uh, what we were looking at back there during second Passover. Right. Right. And what we had was the week of unleavened bread starting there on about May 6th and ending about May 12th. Right. And then, of course, they would have had um, the day after, which is when the Omar would have started. Right. Now, this says Omar 30, which is referring to first Passover. But this would also be when we will start the Omar count for second Pentecost. Right. So on May the 13th, the Omar count started. That would be day zero. And May 14th will be day one. Right. So if we go to a day calculator and put in as a start date of May the 13th, 
we have Sunday, July the 2nd, as the date of Pentecost. Right. And for most of us, that would actually start at sunset this evening. Right. But like we said earlier, Pentecost is every day. Not only are we supposed to make this covenant that we're not going to eat blood, but we're also supposed to give to the Lord, right? Right. Matter of fact, let me jump over here and show you something right quick. This is coming out of Malachi chapter 3, where he's asking the question, will a man rob God? Right. Right. In other words, what he's talking about is not paying these tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned here, and I prayed about it a lot before you know, I talked about this, is that these tithes and offerings today come in the form of brotherly love. In other words, instead of trying to haul all of our goods and wares down to Jerusalem, what I'm understanding now is that we can make this offering, we can make these offerings anywhere. Right. You can give money to the homeless man or you could give money to the church. You can donate food to the shelter. Donate food to the shelter. You, you can feed people on the street. You know, you could uh, just some examples of some stuff you can Find your auntie who may need a new washer right. or, or a new dryer. You could actually purchase that for her. Right. And what it will do is it will work towards your charity. So we have to understand we're required to say 10% of our gross income. So if a person makes $100,000 a year, they are required to give 10000 away. Plus an additional 20% if they've fallen behind. Right. So we have a long ways to go. Many of us do in the paying back of these tithes, and we don't want to um, be accused of robbing God. So what we have to do is find some ways to be charitable, you know? Right. Do stuff for people, you know, pay it forward. You know, when you're at the store and the lady or the man can't find his wallet or the lady doesn't have enough money to pay for it, you know, buy it for them. You know, the person that's outside the door with their hand out, give it to them, right? What we learn in the Third Testament is that even though we may not be aware of all of these covenants, the one thing we could do to make up for lost time is do charitable deeds. And here we have Pentecost, which is a twofold festival. And so this is one opportunity where we can do some charity. Gain our merits. Gain our merits. And we are very behind in this, so we really need to do it. You right. Know? And what I'm, the point I'm trying to make in this video is to do what your hands find to do as far as charity you know things that you come across throughout the day you may not have any money but you can do carpentry work you may be able to fix cars or you may have something that you don't need that you like a car or something that you can get the, the point is to do some type of charity give in this time sacrifice something right you know that's what i was trying the point i was making about the hundred thousand dollar salary is when we are now saying we're going to do these charitable deeds, we actually need to do it until it hurts. You know, don't just flip off $20 and say I'm good. You're not good. Unless you've been on top of this for a long time, you're probably behind. Right. And so, like the preacher man say, make it hurt. But instead of, you know, giving all the money to the preacher man, we can give it to anybody we want. We just have to give it. Right. Even, even our own family members. And see, that part I'm having to learn. Because I always felt like if I give something to my wife, that's like giving something to myself. Well, that's not true. That I'm learning now that that's not true. And so, without going into all of the details of that, now that I understand that that's not true, I could take my charity and buy my wife stuff. Right. Or buy my kids stuff. And not feel like I'm buying myself stuff. Right. The scripture even tells us to spend charity on our family. And then we have that old saying, charity starts at home. Yeah. Right, so we can go out and buy a gift for our husband or wife and accomplish this Pentecost gift, this Pentecost offering. Yeah, there's many a ways to do it, but I'm with the Lord on this. I believe is that the only wrong way to do it is to do nothing, and yeah. not yeah. That's so, the only way. And you will then be considered a robber of God, and you know you are. Are you breaking this covenant? He said it was a twofold covenant. Right. So if you don't do the charity, is that equivalent to eating blood? We'll pray about it and think about it, and we'll see if we can cover that in another video. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Well, I got out of it was that we're supposed to stay away from blood, don't eat it, don't kill anybody, and for us to 
keep with the charity on first fruits. A twofold feast, do charity and abstain from blood, and our chances of survival will greatly increase. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But guys, um, before I close out, we're up here in Washington, D.C. on our vacation. And I'm going to ask for prayer. Prayer also counts. It's charity. All right. Well, we're up here, especially my family is in great need of prayer. And so as you're trying to think of your other more material charitable contributions, y'all contribute to Coach by praying for him and his family. Right. Just right. taking a moment. Sending us some good thoughts. Yeah, we got a lot of videos to come out. Like one of them is why Abraham had to leave his father's house. You know, and like I said, we're up on vacation. I've actually learned that when I went back to visit my daddy. Learning it firsthand. Learning it firsthand. And so you got that video coming up. And so in the meantime, y'all just pray for me and my family. Shalom. Shalom.